Large luxury SUV coupes are generally for people who don't care much about cool, clinical and efficient sense and sensibility. So what would one be like from a brand founded upon just those principles? In this Audi Q8, we have our answer. The Audi Q8 is one of those coupe-style large SUVs, part of a genre pioneered by BMW a decade ago with their X6 and subsequently copied by Mercedes. Audi's considered solution for fashion-orientated folk browsing in this trendy segment is Q7-based and very Vorsprung Dirk Technik. The Volkswagen Group's MLB Evo platform has certainly spawned lots of luxury SUVs. First, we had the Audi Q7, then the Bentley Bentayga, the Porsche Cayenne, the Volkswagen Touareg, the Lamborghini Urus, and now we've come back full circle to a derivative of the Q7, this swoopier Q8. You can see why Audi wants a slice of the large sector SUV coupe market. BMW has, after all, shifted over half a million X6s since that car pioneered the genre a decade ago. This one rolls off the same Slovakian Bratislava line as the Q7, the KN and the Touareg and shares the same wheelbase and cabin width as its large Audi stablemate. The driveway demeanour, though, is very different here. The emphasis on fashion rather than family. And this is a sporting large SUV in a way that a more sizeable seven-seat Q7 could never be. Which is important for Audi because the brand needs a car like this to interest buyers looking for a more dynamic alternative in this segment. BMW's X6 and its copycat rival, the Mercedes GLE Coupe, aim to attract these people with swept back styling. Other class contenders hope the same end can be achieved simply by a general sharpening of drive demeanour, which is what brings us cars in this class like Porsche's Cayenne and the Range Rover Sport. Audi, predictably, claims the Q8 can satisfy on both counts. Plus, it delivers the brand's latest mild hybrid engine technology, a dose of autonomous driving tech if you want it, and a rather lovely cabin. It's pointless asking whether we really need this kind of car. People want them. Audi's made one. Is it any good? Let's find out. It's easy to get confused about the kind of car this is. In principle, it's one of those BMW X6-like large luxury SUV coupe models that newly moneyed folk seem to like so much these days, which you'd think would make it as sporty to drive, or at least as sporty as a 2.2-ton SUV is ever going to be. Actually, as you discover pretty quickly after taking the wheel, the emphasis here is far more on comfort and luxury than it is on live handling which is why Audi uses the full-length version of the Volkswagen Group's MLB Evo platform for this car, rather than the slightly shorter, more agile design of this chassis fitted to a rival Porsche Cayenne. Nevertheless, the Q8 is pretty dynamically adept, with excellent traction and decent body control, but it's still much happier when you're not throwing it about. In some ways, that's odd, because Audi has readily available tools in its armoury that would make this car considerably more rewarding to drive. Principally, the sport-locking rear differential and active anti-roll bars you could have on the brand's SQ7. The engineers decided to keep these things back for the potent 4-litre twin-turbo RS Q8 model, a car specced out to remind us just what an involving machine more standard Q8 variants like this one could have been. Audi will point out, correctly, that this sort of thing isn't key for buyers in this segment, whose priorities centre almost completely upon style and luxury. It would have been nice, though, if this Ingolstadt brand could have delivered a contender here that, in its most accessible forms, had a slightly broader portfolio of virtues. Not that new drive technology is lacking here. Quite the opposite, in fact. Q8 buyers will be offered the chance to specify a sophisticated four-wheel steering system. Plus, you can also add in all the best elements of the brand's Level 3 autonomous driving tech via its optional Traffic Jam Pilot package. In addition, the two main six-cylinder engines on offer come with the brand's mild hybrid technology, which works with a clever starter motor generator system and allows them to coast at both high and low speeds using 48-volt electrical assistance. 
most buyers will choose the unit this car was launched with, the 50 TDI 286 PS diesel power plant we're trying here. It's one of Audi's best, superbly refined, creamy smooth and generally torquey, equipped with 600 newton metres of pulling power. That's enough to allow this Q8 to pull along a 3.5 tonne braked trailer should you need it to. You probably won't. Q8s are more likely to be seen at the gym than the Gymkhana. And if that's the kind of typical commute you're likely to be subjecting this car to, we'd expect that you'll enjoy it very much. Whether you opt for this 50 TDI variant or the alternative mainstream V6 that Audi offers, a 340 PS 3-litre petrol engine badge 55 TFSI. There's certainly no shortage of performance from the diesel V6. 62 miles per hour from rest occupies just 6.3 seconds, which is significantly better than direct competitors can manage, on the way to an academic maximum of 152 miles an hour. And the commanding driving position will please those coming to this car from Audi's large saloon models. What you might not like quite so much is the slight reluctance the ZF 8-speed auto gearbox has to kick down as quickly as you'd like for rapid overtakes. As for ride quality, well, you'd expect that to be excellent, courtesy of Audi's decision to equip all Q8s with standard adaptive air sport suspension. Pretty much that's true, though, because the brand has chosen to use a twin-chamber system rather than the more sophisticated three-chamber setup that Porsche fits to its rival KN, low speed bumps are felt a little more than they would be in that competing model. As usual, with air-suspended setups, this one continuously adjusts the damping at all four wheels and provides self-leveling suspension with automatically regulating ride height. As a result, this Q8 flows comfortably over potholes and speed humps, but is also able to keep chassis movement in check through turns at higher speeds without channel ferry levels of body roll. There's a lift mode for rough roads or ramps, and at over 74 miles per hour, the suspension automatically lowers itself to improve the aerodynamics. We should also talk about the latest version of Audi's Quattro four-wheel drive setup too. It of course features on every model in the range and pushes 60% of power to the rear and 40% to the front during normal driving. But if grip is lost at either end, the majority of power instantly goes to the other axle. It all means that traction's rarely lacking even when cornering on slimy surfaces at higher speeds. The limiting factor here is steering feedback. Unfortunately, there's not a great deal of it, though the helm is reasonably precise, aided by a progressive setup that allows it to operate more and more directly as the turning angle increases. Standard wheel selective torque control further helps through the bends, minimally breaking the two wheels on the inside of the corner before they can begin to spin. Q8 buyers who might occasionally be minded to test the limits of this capability will be people who'd probably appreciate the optional all-wheel steering package we referred to earlier. As usual with such technology, the idea is to improve high-speed cornering stability by making the rear wheels slightly turn in the same direction as those at the front and improve low-speed manoeuvrability by, in that situation, getting them to turn in the opposite direction to the front. It's the parking speed enhancement you'll probably notice most, reducing the turning circle significantly, which makes slotting this 5-metre-long SUV into tight spaces that much easier. As ever with Audi models, there's a standard drive-select driving mode system. It works through the usual comfort, efficiency, dynamic and auto settings, and as usual influences a whole range of driving elements, things like throttle response, gear shift timings, stability system thresholds, steering feel and the settings of the air suspension. There's also an individual option that allows you to tailor particular parameters to your own preferences. Plus, as usual with Audi Quattro SUV style models, an extra setting has here been added to the menu of options, all road. This focuses all of the electronic systems for off-road use, introduces hill descent control when needed, and optimizes the four-wheel drive torque split. 
It's this setting you'd select in your Q8 if, for instance, you were gingerly traversing a slippery or snowy track. It's a scenario in which this car's relatively high ride height would certainly come in useful. It's 220 millimetres in standard form, but if required, the adaptive air suspension can raise the car as much as 254 millimetres off the deck. This is the kind of stat that might be boasted by an SUV much more seriously orientated at off-piste travel than this one. And it's built upon by that standard hill descent control system we just mentioned, which provides automatic braking input to ease you down steep slopes with an incline of more than 6%, during which the car will maintain a constant speed limited at just under 19 miles an hour. You'll be able to monitor gradient levels via a tilt angle indicator on the centre dash screen. Which, of course, is something that 99.9% .9 of ordinary owners will never do. For them, of course, what will be important is this car's capability on the highway rather than in the highlands. Which is why Audi has ensured that Q8 buyers have access to all the latest elements of its so-called Level 3 driving autonomy, which works via an optional traffic jam pilot setup. This will allow the car to drive itself in an unsupervised fashion at speeds of up to 37 miles per hour, so long as you're on a major road with a physical barrier separating both directions of traffic. Plus, the brand has provided parking pilot and garage pilot systems that allow you to stand on the curb and remotely park your Q8 using a smartphone app that will enable it to perform far more complex manoeuvres than anything that competitor systems can manage. All of that's impressive, and on the move in this car, it all serves to further emphasise the feeling that you're only really scratching the surface of what it's been designed to do. That's obviously the case in terms of that autonomous driving tech, but it also applies in other areas too. We've mentioned the luxury orientation of the drive dynamics, but the way this car has been set up it's also very effective in masking its sheer weight and prodigious width, which means that if you're prepared to activate the Drive Select System's dynamic settings and push the handling boundaries a bit, it can actually be hustled along pretty quickly should the knees arise. So perhaps a Q8 is, to some extent at least, the sporty car its looks suggest it might be. And again, perhaps it isn't. You'll enjoy finding out either way. With the Q8, you feel that design in the fashionable segment for sportily styled large luxury SUVs has become a little more credible. The models that originated this class of car, the BMW X6 and the subsequent Mercedes GLE Coupe, certainly have street side presence, but they're very obviously merely coupe versions of their conventional large SUV showroom stable mates. In the same way, this Q8 could have been merely a swept back Q7. Instead, designer Mark Licht and his team have delivered something a little different. A fusion of elegant four-door luxury coupe with large SUV and a car that has very much its own look. One that will be definitive in shaping the styling of future Q-series models for years to come. Those forthcoming Ingolstadt SUVs will all share this, the Q8's calling card, an imposing octagonally shaped single-frame grille. These six vertical struts are there to make it look more upright and solid and a wide outer masking frame finished in either grey or black depending on trim connects the whole structure to narrow HD matrix LED headlights that show unique animations when the car is locked and unlocked. There are the uh, large, strongly contoured lower corner air intakes that are characteristic of this kind of car. And below the subtle spoiler, a silvered skid plate confirms this car's trendy SUV status. From the side, you get a better perspective of the sheer size of Audi's aspirations here. Being almost five metres in length and virtually two metres in width, this luxury five-seater is just 66 millimetres shorter than the seven-seat Q7, but 27 millimetres wider and shares the same wheelbase as its sister model. The kind of dramatically tapering rear roof line that features on segment rivals is replaced here by a more subtly swept back silhouette that arches slightly towards flat, sloping, strong D-pillars supported by this muscular contour crease that's supposed to be reminiscent of the original Audi Quattro.
A further lower hollowed groove in the panel work gives the flanks some shape, connecting powerful arches that house huge rims of either 21 or 22 inches in size. We've got 21 inches here. Relieved of the need to accommodate a third seating row, as it must in the Q7, the rear end is angled and aerodynamic. It's characterised, perhaps most notably, by this narrow central high-gloss black element, which incorporates an integrated strip extending between these jewel-like LED tail lights. Lower down, the diffuser features large tailpipe trims and these vertical guides that reference the look of the front grille. As usual, though, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. A body based around multi-material Audi space frame, steel and aluminium construction, and bolted to the full length version of the stiff, strong MLB Evo chassis that all Volkswagen Group brands use for their large SUVs. We'd expected that the Q8, as a supposedly sportier offering, would prioritise dynamic agility by featuring the slightly shorter version of this platform that Porsche uses for its KN. But no, exclusive comfort actually turns out to have been a greater priority here, as we'll discover by taking a seat at the wheel. Mm. There's no cockpit style feel here as there would be in, say, that KN. Instead, Audi's delivered us what it calls a luxury lounge based around the upmarket cabin structure it now uses on all its larger models. You're going to need to like screens because this gloss black panel layout incorporates no fewer than three of them. The two you'll notice first powering up as soon as the doors opened and dominating the upper and lower parts of the shiny centre stack. In an attempt to deliver the required splash of luxury needed for a car of this status, the designers have fashioned this backlit aluminium central strip which flows the width of the dash and curves under the upper MMI screen. But unless you take up the extra cost option of trimming this whole centre console area in polished grey oak, it's all a little overshadowed by the overriding emphasis on high gloss black surfacing. To properly lift the sophisticated but slightly clinical atmosphere, you'll need to spend significantly on extras like the extended LED interior lighting pack and a full leather pack that coats the dash in lovely stitched leather. Or get the priciest top Vorsprung trimmed variant that includes both these things. We said there were three screens. The third one is found in the instrument binnacle, the now familiar 12.3 inch configurable virtual cockpit display that the brand fits, usually at extra cost, right across its model range. Here it's standard and works as usual with two selectable layouts, a classical view that prioritises a couple of prominent dials separated by an information screen and an infotainment mode which shrinks the pair of gauges to allow more central space for various data readouts or a full width navigation setup. You view all of this information through a grippy three spoke stitched steering wheel and are seated on supportive sports seats trimmed in leather and Alcantara which feature heating, electric adjustment and lumbar support. Many buyers, though, will want to upgrade to the optional quilted super sports chairs upholstered in softer Valcona leather. We've no issues with any of this, but we're not quite so sure about the fundamental concept behind the two MMI touch response centre stack monitors mentioned earlier, mainly because it relies almost entirely on screen touch and voice control. The rotary controller by the gear stick that you get in, say, this model's Q7 stablemate makes it much easier to access particular infotainment screen functions without taking your eyes away from the road. To be fair, this q 8 twin screen setup does work a little better than the similar one found on larger Range Rovers. First, because here the lower display deals primarily with climate control and comfort functions. And second, because the whole system functions more effectively with haptic feedback, which sees the touchscreen surface emit a tactile and acoustic signal when a function is pressed. You've got to press pretty firmly, though, a bit like you would if you were using a touchpad on a laptop computer, which, as already suggested, isn't ideal if you want quick access to something without looking at it. 
The 10.1 inch upper display features tile apps that you can move around with the kind of drag and drop functionality you'll be used to from your smartphone. Uh, they deal with the most important radio, media, telephone and navigation functions. Plus, as you'd expect, there's the usual Audi smartphone interface compatible with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems. There's a 10 gigabyte flash memory for music storage and of course you get a full suite of Audi Connect media connectivity features that, amongst other things, deliver uh, online media streaming, a Google points of interest search function, a comprehensive Audi online traffic information system, plus news and weather feeds via a Wi-Fi hotspot supporting the new superfast LTE advanced mobile data network. Configurable favourites buttons help tailor the system to user preferences and allow up to seven drivers to store their preferred settings in individual user profiles and set up to 400 parameters. As we've said, the lower monitor, which is 8.6 inches in size, is reserved for more comfort-orientated features. Plus, its screen can also allow you to trace letters with your fingertips so that the search system can then give you selection options. Of course, you might expect that to be just another thing that would leave these shiny displays continually coated in grubby fingerprints. And you might also worry about sunlight reflection. Now, Audi's tried, with partial success, to mitigate both of these issues by use of an anti-fingerprint coating and a layer of anti-glare film. But to some extent, both problems still remain. What we do like about this setup is the way that the upper screen can be turned off to prevent nighttime distraction and its main functions summarised on the top part of the lower display. What else? Well, all-round vision from the driver's seat is excellent. Uh, even out of the back, despite the sloping rear roof line and the rather wide D-pillars. Just in case, though, all-round parking sensors and a rear-view camera come as standard. A head-up display is optional, but with the virtual cockpit setup fitted, we don't really think there's actually much need for it. On to storage space. Now, one of the problems with having a two-screen centre console layout like this is that it leaves no space for the storage cubby that in most cars would sit just ahead of the gear stick and act as a handy place to stash your phone. Also lacking in this Q8 is a decently big storage bin uh, between the seats. You do get one, but it's, it's shallow and almost completely taken up by the standard wireless charging mat. This lidded box has a top that can slide forward and function as an armrest. And if you lift it up, you'll find that the area it conceals incorporates SIM and SD card ports, as well as a couple of USB points. What else? Well, the lidded cup holder compartment to the left of the gear lever incorporates a 12 volt socket. The door bins aren't especially big and there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses, but you do get a decently sized air conditioned glove box, refreshingly unencumbered by media equipment. And a ticket clip on the driver's sun visor, along with a large concealed cubby by the driver's right knee. Let's move to the rear, accessed via this wide opening frameless door. Now, given that the wheelbase of this five seat model is basically the same as that of its seven seat Q7 showroom stablemate, you'd think this Q8 would be pretty spacious in the rear. Let's see. Sure enough, there's ample leg and headroom for a couple of six foot adults to stretch out in real comfort. It's certainly less claustrophobic back here than it is in a rival BMW X6, thanks to surprisingly generously sized side windows and a taller roof. The headspace you get is particularly impressive for a car claiming coupe credentials. And there's 750 millimeters of legroom, a bit more than you'd get in a rival Range Rover Sport, but a bit less than you'd find in a Porsche KM, which is surprising because that model rides on a slightly shorter wheelbase. You can improve leg space even further on a Q8 fitted with a sliding rear bench. The rear bench seat plus package, a feature which rather meanly Audi charges extra for on this base S-Line model. Rear seat heating, rear blinds, privacy glass, four zone air conditioning and extra USB points can all be added in to make life back here more pleasant. 
There's enough body width for a third adult to sit in the middle of this bench without having to breathe in first, but that person will have to sit on a rather uncomfortably raised section of foam and straddle this fairly hefty transmission tunnel. If there are only two of you and you're able to use this centre armrest, you'll find the usual couple of cup holders, though no incorporated storage. Above the transmission tunnel, you get twin vents supplementing those built into the B pillars. A 12 volt port is provided and a couple of extra USBs back here can be added if you pay extra for the Audi music interface. There are netted seat back pockets, LED overhead reading lights and decently sized door pockets built into the beautifully finished Alcantara and aluminium trimmed door cards. We'll finish by taking a look out back. The hatch opens electrically as standard, gesture control is optional, to reveal a 605 litre space. To give you some class perspective, that's 25 litres more than a rival BMW X6, but 45 litres less than this car's other most direct competitor, the Mercedes GLE Coupe. You can extend this Audi's capacity further if you've got the rear bench seat plus package we just referred to and can push the back seat forward. In terms of getting stuff in, you'll be initially put off by the lofty height of this SUV's cargo deck, but help in this regard is at hand courtesy of switches down here to the left that can significantly lower the air suspension. That makes it way easy to get in heavy boxes and bags or possibly to allow your arthritic Labrador to hop aboard. In that case, you're going to need to option in the reversible rubber cargo mat and possibly also the extra cost removable net partition. You get a 12 volt socket, but there isn't any significant storage space beneath the boot floor, despite Audi's refusal to supply any sort of spare wheel. This silver finished loading lip trimming plate will easily scratch too. A couple of netted storage areas are provided to the left, and there are four chromed tie down hooks. If you specified the trailer pack we've got here, the buttons for the electrically extending tow bar can be found alongside those for the air suspension. Apparently, two golf bags can easily fit in crosswise in here. If you've longer items like skis to accommodate, the fact that the rear bench has a 40-20-40 split means that you can push forward the centre section without disturbing two rear seated passengers. If you need more room, completely flattening the rear bench frees up 1,755 litres of capacity, which easily beats the capacity of the two rival models we just mentioned. Those attracted by this Audi will be expecting premium pricing and of course Ingolstadt has delivered exactly that. The sales focus for this model is with the engine we've been trying here, the 3 litre V6 diesel powered 50 TDI variant which puts out 286 PS and from launch was offered in base S-line form from around £65,000 and in plusher Vorsprung guys from around £83,000. For petrol people, there's a 3 litre V655 TFSI derivative with 340 PS. And you can ask your dealer about a flagship 4 litre twin turbo V8 powered RSQ8 Model 2. We can also expect petrol electric plug in technology to make an appearance in the Q8 lineup in this design's production lifetime. On to rivals, which we'll evaluate against the benchmark 50 TDI S-Line variant we're trying here. If, as we do, you classify this Q8 as one of those fashion-led coupe-style large SUVs, then there are only two direct rivals. The originator of this trendy segment is BMW's X6, and in second-generation form, the most directly comparable version of that Munich model, the X-Drive 30D derivative, costs around £4,000 less than its particular Q8, but offers a fraction less performance and luggage space. The other direct alternative this Ingolstadt contender must face down is the Mercedes GLE Coupe 350D, which costs about the same as this Audi to buy, but will set you back a significant amount more to run. Beyond the BMW and that Merc, we'd imagine that potential Q8 buyers should we call them Q80s, uh, will be looking at the most dynamically orientated contenders in the more conventional part of the large luxury SUV segment. Something perhaps like a Range Rover Sport STV6 or maybe a sportily trimmed Maserati Levante 3 litre V6 diesel Grand Sport, both of which would also cost you about the same as a Q850 TDI S line. 
We'd normally additionally mention the Porsche Cayenne in considering this class of car, but that model now can't be had with diesel power. So, if you wanted to include it in your deliberations, your point of comparison would need to be with a plug-in petrol electric Cayenne, which incidentally costs only fractionally more than this particular version of this Audi. You might also want to consider a Range Rover Velar, which cost fractionally more in its most comparable D275R Dynamic HSE guise, but offers less luggage and rear cabin space. Having looked at those other options, you might well conclude, as we have, that there's nothing quite like a Q8. And if having come to that conclusion, you're moved to want to buy one, you'll be expecting Audi to have been generous with the standard equipment on offer. Nor should you be disappointed, even if your budget restricts you to the entry-level S-line trim we're trying here. There's quattro four-wheel drive, of course, in this case with a self-locking centre differential and an eight-speed Tiptronic auto gearbox. The Drive Select driving mode system, which here has an extra all-road setting, influences this transmission's shift timings as well as throttle response, stability thresholds, steering feel and the ride quality of the standard adaptive air sport suspension. This can vary ride height by up to 90 millimetres and is a two-chamber setup rather than the more sophisticated three-chamber air suspension that Porsche uses on its rival KN model. Audi HD Matrix LED headlights that adapt to traffic and road conditions also come as standard and feature unique animations as you lock or unlock the car. Other visual embellishments include big 21-inch wheels, signature LED daytime running lights, LED tail lamps and a sports styling pack that includes S-Line themed bumpers, side ventilation grills, side skirts and a roof spoiler, plus a platinum grey front spoiler lip and diffuser insert. There's also privacy glass, a powered tailgate, power folding mirrors, auto headlamps and wipers, headlamp washers, an anti-theft alarm and Audi's parking system plus package of all-round parking sensors, though unfortunately no spare wheel. Inside you get leather and Alcantara trimmed front sports seats that are heated and power adjustable with a memory function. And they place you perfectly in front of stainless steel pedals and a branded stitched steering wheel through which you view the fully digital Audi virtual cockpit 12.3 inch screen that replaces the usual instrument gauges with a customizable display. Other standard cabin features include two-zone automatic climate control, a rear-view camera, cruise control with a speed limiter, an auto-dimming frameless rear-view mirror, illuminated branded door sill trims and matte brushed aluminium inlays. You'd expect the infotainment technology to be cutting edge in a car of this one's pretensions. It is. You get Audi's top MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch package, but it looks very different to the way that it does on this model's Q7 showroom stablemate. This Q8 borrowing the layout we first saw in the fourth generation A8 saloon with its two centre stack screens, a 10.1 inch one up top and an 8.6 inch monitor just below it. Via the MMI setup, the display up top shows you an intelligent 3D navigation system that's able to take into account traffic congestion and previously driven routes, brief you on filling stations and parking places on your route and include 3D graphic models of many European cities. The MMI package also includes voice recognition, a DVD player, a 10-speaker 180-watt DAB sound system and the usual smartphone interface that hooks you up with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto phone mirroring connectivity systems. The Audi Music interface offers simple pairing with your mobile devices using two USB ports with charge and data functions. Plus, the Audi Phone Box package can boost your handset signal and includes a wireless charging mat to power it up. As an included part of the MMI system, there's a three-year subscription to the Audi Connect Media Connectivity Package, which works via an embedded SIM card that's permanently installed in the car and operates on a data flat rate, so you won't be stung with high roaming charges if you do a bit of intercontinental motoring. The setup comes with an LTE data transmission module that establishes high-speed 4G Internet 3 access and creates in your Q8 a, a Wi-Fi hotspot supporting the new super-fast LTE advanced mobile data network. It also allows you to navigate with images from Google Earth, access a Google Points of Interest search function with voice control and use a web radio setup with stations from around the world. 
through the Connect system, you can access special in-car versions of your Facebook and Twitter pages. And it's possible to read, write and send text messages and emails. The included online media streaming package gives access to millions of music tracks and there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system that uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. Also built into Audi Connect is the car to x services system that the brand has developed in partnership with Daimler and BMW. That allows this Audi to often almost magically respond to future weather or traffic conditions or to somehow know what's around the next corner. It's not magic, of course. The setup instead driven by a mobile phone supported so-called vehicle swarm exchange of information system that will see your Q8 sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub which then shares it with other drivers. What else? Well, you can take Audi Connect connectivity with you even when you're not with your Q8 thanks to the improved My Audi app. This transmits points of interest to the navigation system, streams music and can transfer your calendar to the MMI infotainment screen. The app also allows you to seamlessly plan a route across multiple devices. So if you're going to a restaurant in an unfamiliar city, for example, and have to park a few streets away from the venue, navigation will continue with you on your smartphone as you complete the journey on foot. Finally, as usual with the vehicle apps of this sort, you can use it to get a vehicle status report and to lock or unlock the doors from wherever you are. Is it worth finding the extra cash for more complete Vorsprung flagship level of trim? We're talking a big £18,000 price jump from S-Line spec. But if you were thinking of heavily embellishing this car anyway, it might be one worth making because with this top variant, you'll find that virtually every significant option box will have been ticked for you. Inevitably, the Vorsprung embellishment includes a lot of luxury niceties. Larger 22-inch wheels, a panoramic glass roof, super sport seats trimmed in softer Valcona leather, an Alcantara headlining, a powered steering column, and so on. There's some extra stuff of real substance too, though. All-wheel steering, for instance. With this setup, the rear wheels are able to turn in the opposite direction to the front at parking speeds to considerably improve manoeuvrability, while at over 37 miles per hour, turning those rear wheels in the same direction as the fronts to improve handling and corner turn-in. Another Vorsprung spec feature of note is the upgraded Bang & Olufsen Premium 3D Sound audio setup, which features 17 speakers, including 3D sound speakers, a 16-channel amplifier and 730 watts of sound. With this top trim level, the front of the cabin will look significantly more premium, thanks to the addition of a flat-bottomed sports steering wheel and an extended leather pack, which adds a leather covering for the upper instrument panel, the door rails, the door armrests and the centre console. And the rear seat will be a nicer place to be thanks to side and rear window sun blinds, heated upholstery and the rear bench seat plus package that allows you to slide the back seat base forward and back to either improve legroom or maximise cargo space. In addition, upgraded four-zone climate control allows those in the back to adjust fan speed and temperature. Plus, the Audi Music interface adds a couple of extra USB ports for backseat folk and two more USBs for the front. Other standard Vorsprung spec feature additions include a head-up display, a 360-degree surround view camera system, advanced key, keyless entry, powered door closure that automatically latches doors left ajar, a powered front passenger seat, a double sun visor, an electric luggage compartment cover, and a multicoloured extended LED interior lighting pack that allows you to bathe the cabin in your choice of colours. For the outside, a Vorsprung spec Q8 can be identified by a titanium black styling pack, which adds that shade to the front radiator grille frame, the door mirrors, and to styling accents found on the front bumper and the side window trims. There's also a certain level of autonomous driving assistance, much of which comes from the adaptive cruise assist system that Vorsprung spec Q8s get as standard. This setup works at any speed between rest and 152 miles an hour and can detect lane markings, structures next to the road, vehicles in adjacent lanes and multiple vehicles ahead. And of course will adjust your highway speed to suit surrounding traffic. It also works with an included predictive efficiency assistant package that can use navigation data to adjust your Q8's driving demeanour for extra comfort and efficiency, adjusting speed to suit road topography and activating things like highway coasting or engine braking. 
A whole network of electronic kit is needed to support this kind of capability. Up to five radar sensors, five cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors and a laser scanner. Much of it also used for the extra high-tech safety features that also come as part of Vorsprung spec. We'll get to those in a moment. Before we do, let's say a few words about options. What's been done with the test car we're trying here is what we think most owners will do. Rather than paying the huge premium for the top Vorsprung level of trim we've been telling you about, most buyers will probably opt for a standard S-line spec model like this one and then add in those particular extra features they really want. Most of the Vorsprung spec stuff is, after all, available individually on the options list. Just pick and choose the items you like the sound of from the various Vorsprung spec features we've just taught you through. This particular Q8 S-Line, for example, has been fitted out with the panoramic glass roof, the rear seat bench plus sliding rear bench, four-zone climate control, powered door closure, the multicoloured extended LED interior lighting pack, the 360-degree surround view camera setup and that desirable Bang & Olufsen 17-speaker sound system. Those last three features can be had bundled together as part of an optional comfort and sound pack for S-Line buyers that also includes advanced key, keyless entry and an electric luggage compartment cover. Of course, Vorsprung spec doesn't include everything you can order on a Q8, so let's move on to consider items you'll have to pay extra for, whatever your choice of trim. You might want to consider a heated steering wheel or maybe ventilated cooled front seats with a massaging function. There's a pricey night vision assistance package that uses army-derived thermal imaging technology to highlight people or animals at night on the virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen and acoustic glazing is available for the side and rear windows. You can build a digital TV into the infotainment system, or if the Bang & Olufsen 17 speaker upgrade somehow isn't enough for you, there's a 23 speaker, 1920 watt Bang & Olufsen package that will really get your Q8 rocking. On to aesthetics. Now, unless you want your Q8 painted in solid night black or pure white, you're going to need to pay Audi more for a shade from its metallic colour range. We've got metallic glacier white here. S-Line model buyers also get a selection of alloy wheel designs with two different 21-inch options. We've got five V-spoke S rims here, plus a 22-inch wheel style available too. Whatever your choice, the optional red brake calipers might provide a finishing touch. As for the inside, well, if you find the standard darkened matte brushed aluminium inlays a bit cool and clinical, you can pay extra for polished oak inlays with a grey finish. If you've paid extra for the Super Sports seats or got them as standard on a Vorsprung model, then you can have their Valcona leather upholstery finished in either black with anthracite stitching or rotor grey with grey stitching. On to practicalities. It's odd that roof rails aren't standard on any Q8. You can add aluminium ones to S-Line trim and black ones to a Vorsprung model. We'd certainly want a space-saving spare wheel. This particular car also has the optional trailer pack, which gives you an electrically folding tow bar and Audi's clever trailer assist system that's activated whenever reverse gear is engaged and helps you to park whatever you're towing. Talking of parking, on an S-Line variant, you can specify a park assist system that will automatically help you locate parking spaces, then steer you into them. To add to the usability of the cargo bay, there's a load area fixing kit, which gives you a fixing set for the rail system in the luggage compartment, complete with a telescopic pole and a fastening strap. There's also an optional removable net partition to separate the passenger and luggage areas. And we would want the reversible cargo area floor mat, which has a carpet on one side with rubber on the other, ideal for muddy boots and muddy dogs. Enough with optional features, let's move on to look at safety. Now, before we get into all the electronic stuff, we ought to make the point that this car is fundamentally very safe thanks to its torsionally rigid body shell and structural front end. In head-on collision, three stress planes in the nose section absorb the forces. Plus, there are Isofix child seat mountings, a tyre pressure warning light and all the usual front side and curtain airbags too, with rear side bags available as an option. Should the worst happen and you have a crash that activates the airbags, a standard Audi Connect safety and service feature will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location. 
But of course, the primary purpose of modern safety technology is to avoid an accident in the first place, which is the task of a whole armory of electronic camera-driven features. Over 40 of these have been developed for this Q8, and many of them are standard. As you'd expect in this day and age, there's an autonomous braking system included in that roster. Ingolstadt calls its setup Audi Presense Front. And, like other similar packages, this one scans the road ahead looking for potential accident hazards as you drive and will automatically brake the car to try and avoid them if you don't respond to warnings. There's also a lane departure warning setup that works between 37 and 152 miles an hour and issues a warning if you drift out of your lane on the highway before applying subtle steering assistance to ease you back to where you should be. In addition, your Q8 will come with distance warning, which alerts you if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front, and rest recommendation, which alerts you if drowsiness is detected in your driving reactions. For more of Audi's sophisticated camera safety and semi-autonomous driving tech features, you'll need to either upgrade to top Vorsprung spec, which has it all as standard, or on an S-Line variant like this one, pay extra for the optional City Assist Pack and Tour Pack options that your Audi Centre will offer you. Let's start with the City Assist Pack, which includes six main features. Side Assist works as a blind spot monitor, warning you on the move if you're dangerously about to pull out to overtake in the path of another vehicle. Cross Traffic Assist Front warns of dangerous cross traffic movements at junctions and can, if necessary, automatically apply the brakes, preventing an accident. Cross Traffic Assist Rear can warn you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. Presense Rear warns you via a flashing light if you're about to be hit from behind so that you can try and take avoiding action. And Exit Warning stops a passenger door opening when the car is stationary and oncoming traffic is dangerously approaching. And finally, in a situation where you're driving but you've lost control and an accident impact is inevitable, there's a Presense Basic system that will activate milliseconds just before the crash, tightening the seat belts and, if necessary, closing windows and sunroof to give you a better chance of surviving it. Presense Basic also features as one of seven features bundled into the other key optional safety pack that a Q8 S-Line buyer could specify. The Tour Pack, we've been trying it on this particular car. Here, as well as extra safety peace of mind, you additionally get a degree of driving autonomy tech included. We mentioned two of the key elements of this earlier when talking you through the Vorsprung model's specification, namely Adaptive Cruise Assist, which can control much of your Q8's driving functionality at cruising speeds, and Audi's Predictive Efficiency Assistant, which uses navigation data to automatically optimise comfort and efficiency. Other tour pack inclusions include Turn Assist, which activates when you put on the indicators and will brake the car if you try and manoeuvre or pull out in front of another vehicle. In addition, you get a Collision Avoidance Assistant, which will support your actions during an accident avoidance manoeuvre, providing extra steering torque and using the vehicle's sensors to calculate the optimum path of avoidance. We should further mention that the Tour Pack includes traffic sign recognition, which pictures speed signs you pass and displays them on the virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen. And finally, as part of this pack, there's also an emergency assist element added to the standard lane departure warning system that's able to autonomously bring the car to a safe, controlled stop if you don't respond to repeated warnings about drifting out of lane, as might be the case if, for example, you were suddenly taken ill at the wheel. Of course, Audi's efforts towards autonomous driving technology don't stop there. For all its latest large models, the Ingolstadt brand has developed the capability for what the industry calls Level 3 autonomous driving capability. And for that, you'll need to ask your Audi centre about the possibility of getting this car specified with what the company calls its Traffic Jam Pilot setup. This will allow the car to drive itself in an unsupervised fashion at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour, so long as you're on a highway with a physical barrier separating both directions of traffic. It's quite a step forward. And two other optional autonomous features include the parking pilot and garage pilot systems that will allow you to park your Q8 without being in the car using a smartphone app. Tesla pioneered such autonomous parking technology, but Audi has refined it and enabled it to undertake far more complex manoeuvres. 
Ultimately, however you specify this QH, there are going to be a lot of safety systems to oversee, particularly if you've ticked a few options boxes. The car itself oversees all these features via an incorporated central driver assistance controller, which permanently calculates an image of the driving environment you're in, appropriately activating the different elements to meet different situations. But how do you monitor all of this as a driver? Well, Audi's tried to simplify that process here by providing a driver assist button at the bottom of the centre stack, there to allow the selection of the kind of electronic security blanket you want. Basic includes only the most important items, maximum gives you everything, and individual allows you to pick and choose the features you want activated. At the lowest driver assist level, BASIC, there's that standard pre-sense front autonomous braking system we mentioned earlier. And the lane departure warning system here embellished with that emergency assist feature because we've got that optional tour pack fitted. The top maximum driver assist setting adds in things like the distance warning and rest recommendation features we mentioned earlier. It's all very reassuring. One of the things that Audi's not quite so keen to talk about with this Q8 is weight. You might expect this car to be relatively light by the standards of weighty, large, luxury SUVs. After all, the company's space frame technology has been employed here. Plus, copious amounts of aluminium have been used to fashion the doors, the front wings, the tailgate, the roof, the rear wheel housings and large parts of the floor. Despite all of this, though, the quoted curb weight here is a hefty 2,230 kilograms, 165 kilograms more than the equivalent version of BMW's Rival X6, a much older design. As a result of that, you'll need to manage your expectations in terms of the efficiency figures you're likely to get. Mindful of this, Audi has equipped all engines it uses for its current large size models with MHEV or mild hybrid electric vehicle technology made possible by a belt alternator starter which is the nerve center of a clever 48 volt electrical system. In highway motoring at between 34 and 99 miles an hour, this enables the car to coast for up to 40 seconds with the engine switched off. At slower speeds, it provides for an increased energy recovery output of up to 12 kilowatts. And in traffic, it allows for an extended stop-start function that can work at up to 13 miles an hour. The Ingolstadt brand claims that the combined impact of all of this equates to a saving of 0.7 litres of fuel every 100 kilometres or 62 miles, so it's a worthwhile improvement. Let's get specific and give you the figures for the 50 TDI 3 litre diesel model we're trying here. In both S-Line and Vorsprung guises, this can manage 41.5 mpg on the combined cycle and 178 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's a fraction better than you'll get from a rival BMW X6 30D xDrive and way better than this model's other direct competitor, the Mercedes GLE Coupe 350D can manage. The readings also slightly shade what you'd get from other potential rivals you might be considering in this class, say a Range Rover Sport SD V6 or a Maserati Levante 3 litre V6 diesel, though not by as much as you might expect given all this Audi's extra hybrid style technology. We've been achieving just under 30 miles per gallon in regular use throughout this test, which would equate to a driving range from the 75 litre fuel tank of around 475 miles in normal motoring. Get closer to the 40 miles per gallon reading that the official figures suggest, and you could potentially push that towards the 600 mile mark. This Q8 50 TDI model's benefit in kind taxation rate is pretty much as high as it gets for this kind of model at 37%. This car being one of those adversely affected by the recent government decision to shift all diesels up a percentage band for BIK rates. This could actually mean that the alternative 55 TFSI V6 petrol derivative, which ought to average around 40 miles per gallon and dip under 160 grams per kilometre of CO2, would end up being cheaper to tax than its diesel equivalent. That 55 TFSI variant 3 litre V6 does without cylinder deactivation, but is helped in efficiency terms by the way it houses its turbochargers within the 90 degree V of the engine, and by the way that the exhaust manifold is built into the cylinder head for a quicker warm-up sequence. 
Whatever your Q8 variant of choice, magazine tests have pointed out that across the board, the efficiency figures we've quoted can be difficult to achieve in day-to-day -day motoring. But then that's not an issue exclusive to Audi. Much will depend on the driver, hence the Ingolstadt brand's efforts with this car to help the person at the wheel do more when it comes to frugality. An efficiency assist segment of the center dash infotainment screen allows you to activate or deactivate some of the car's main frugality aids, things like the intelligent coasting feature we mentioned earlier, and accelerator pedal feedback that resists you pressing too hard on the throttle. You can also activate general economy tips and what Audi calls predictive messaging. There's also an energy consumer's readout in the instrument cluster, showing you the effect that, say, the air conditioning is having on the car's energy usage. Beyond that, as usual with the company's models, there's an efficiency setting on the Drive Select Vehicle Dynamic System, which tweaks the air conditioning, gear shift timings and throttle response for maximum frugality. If you choose to use the individual drive select mode that allows you to tailor your preferred settings, you'll find that efficient is one of three options you can choose for each criteria setting. The MMI navigation system on this car has been programmed around what Audi calls predictive and efficient driving, which means that it will adapt the drive demeanor of your Q8 based on things like speed limits and gradient changes. And if you specify the optional tour pack on this car, you'll find that it can be even more proactively efficient thanks to the predictive efficiency assist setup that comes as part of the pack's adaptive cruise assist system. Predictive Efficiency Assist really is very clever, constantly gathering navigation data, camera images and feedback from the built-in Car to X message system that receives car swarm feedback from other similarly equipped vehicles. Using all this, the software can then contribute to a more economical driving style. For example, instructing you when to release the accelerator before entering a curve or behind a slower vehicle, for instance. Get onto the highway and with the adaptive cruise control system activated, efficiency assist will automatically make all the frugal driving adjustments for you. What else? Well, bear in mind that all versions of this car will be subject to the government's tax levy for models costing over £40,000. That stands at £450 a year for the first five years of ownership. And of course, as with all modern diesel cars, the TDI versions of this one use an AdBlue fuel additive stored in a separate rear tank that'll need to be topped up as part of regular servicing. Talking of maintenance, servicing your Q8 should be no more taxing than is the case with one of the company's smaller cars. As usual with Audi models, there's a choice of either a fixed or a flexible servicing regime. The choice between the two depending on the extent of your likely annual mileage. The fixed schedule is aimed at drivers covering fewer than 10,000 miles a year and includes an oil change service every 9,000 miles or every year, plus an inspection service every 19,000 miles or every two years. If you cover more than 10,000 miles a year, the flexible service schedule will be more appropriate. This regime, including oil change and inspection services at variable intervals of up to 19,000 miles or every two years. Whatever package you go for, you'll need to change the brake fluid after the first three years, then every two years thereafter. Overall maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans you'll be offered at initial purchase, which can cover you up to a maximum of three years and include an oil service and a major service. You may also be interested to know that this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect safety and service system app. As well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance, this feature can, at the appropriate time, send a service request direct to your local dealer. Alternatively, you can sign up for Audi Service Request, which uses the onboard Wi-Fi to enable your car to communicate with the dealer. As your Q8 nears the time when work will be needed, the diagnostics alert your nominated local Audi centre, who will then contact you to book in a convenient time. 
Another neat service your dealer can offer you is the so-called Audi Cam system. Here, technicians carrying out workshop inspections on your Q8 can focus a handheld Audi Cam camera on specific problems, accompanying the image with a verbal diagnosis to create footage that can be sent to your computer or smartphone. That way, you'll know precisely what work you're authorising on your car. On to residuals. For once, we're testing an Audi that isn't top of its class in this regard, but it's not far off. According to industry experts, CAP, a Q850 TDI S-Line model like the one we're trying here, would, after three years and 60,000 miles, be worth 46.7% of its original value. The class leader in this respect is the Range Rover Sport SDV6 HSE, which manages 49.5%. The two most direct rivals to this Audi that we mentioned earlier, though, are way off this q 8 figure. A Mercedes GLE Coupe 350D returns 40.7% of its value in the same period, while for a BMW X6 xDrive 30D is just 35.8%. That kind of difference could cost you a lot in overall ownership terms. For reference, if you were to pay the extra money for the top Vorsprung version of this Q8, your predicted residual value would fall slightly to 45.9%. But that's still pretty good compared to a top spec version of the class leading Range Rover Sport SDV6, which in its plushest autobiography dynamic form manages 47.5%. It's a similar story when it comes to pence per mile running costs amongst models in this class. Again, CAP reckons that a Range Rover Sport SDV6 HSE is out in front, costing 69.19 pence per mile to run. But here, its advantage is only fractional over a Q8 50 TDI, which costs 69.82 pence per mile to operate. Again, the rival Mercedes GLE Coupe and BMW X6 models are way off this kind of showing, returning respective figures of 77 pence per mile and 79. 0.91 pence per mile. In short, it'll really pay you to do your sums before deciding on a car of this kind. We'll finish by covering the warranty. All cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas BMW and Mercedes don't limit your mileage in this period, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost packages can extend the cover to either four or five years and 75,000 or 95,000 miles respectively. As for insurance groupings, well, for this 50 TDI variant, you're looking at group 47E. The eighth dimension has been an important one for Audi. At the end of the last century, the A8 brought a new Vorsprung der Technik feel to the boardroom luxury saloon sector. Then in 2006, the introduction of the R8 proved that the brand could build a credible supercar too. This Q8 might not be quite as groundbreaking, but there's no doubt that it also sets fresh standards. In this case, for what a stylized large SUV can be. It's a credible flagship for arguably the most important segment of the Ingolstadt makers range. You can see why Audi felt it had to build this model, though it's a little hard to understand why it took the brand so long to bring it to market. We'd half hoped that this delay might have enabled the company to introduce a few radically new elements to the fashionable formula championed by this sort of car. That hasn't happened here, but even so, the Q8 does manage to provide buyers seduced by this class-conscious category something just that little bit different. Exactly what that is can be a little difficult to define. Perhaps the easiest way to express it is to suggest that if you turn up to a business meeting in this contender's two most obvious competitors, the BMW X6 or the Mercedes GLE Coupe, some might dismiss you as a showy extrovert. Arrive in a Q8 and the impact would be a touch more subtle. For some, that distinction will be important, particularly as this Audi is, in its own way, just as stylish and avant-garde as its two main Teutonic arch rivals. And in summary, well, no SUV you could choose in this sector is going to add up if you judge it from a purely sensible perspective. So in considering this Audi, you're rather beguiling you freed up to purely please yourself. If you're attracted by it, then probably nothing else in this part of the market will do. It's unnecessary, it's uninhibited, and it's undeniably appealing, as all of life's most appealing trinkets are. In other words, it's everything that this kind of car should be.